folks, we want to talk through thermodynamics for the event leaders and for the student competitors to think this one's got a lot of logistics this year. I want to make sure that everyone's kind of on the same page with what um, we think is going to happen that day. So students, you are going to show up and impound your device and two identical beakers. I have cautioned lots of people that we should bring three identical beakers because Murphy's Law is that one is going to drop, get lost, or if you're using glass, potentially shatter. So it doesn't hurt to have three of these, but they can be plastic or glass. They've got to be a standard size. It needs to look like this, right? It's, um, this is a standard 250 milliliter beaker. All right, so at impound, you're going to get, uh, every student group will get a, check, a checklist so that they can, the event leaders can go down the list and make sure that the device meets standards and specs. Students, you have to check the box in. If you're Division C, the box can be 15 centimeters or less. If you're Division B, it can be 20 centimeters or less in all directions in the cube. So event leaders at impound, go ahead and, and check those measurements. The second measurement you need to check is that there's a one and a half centimeter hole that goes straight down through to the center of the device. Students, you can't Insulate around that, put a membrane across the top of it. Um, it must be an open hole all the way down into your beaker, okay? So don't try and skirt around the edge of the rules on that. The third thing is that with the speaker on the inside, to the top, the bottom of your beaker, to the top of your device cannot be more than 12 centimeters apart. So we're gonna have these um, very technical dowel rods and they're gonna be marked at 12 centimeters so that we can plop them down in the device and show. I want to do this at impound because we don't want to wait until students are loading these full of water and then be trying to check it. So students, you need to be able to show, I know that once you get your water, you might be putting a piece of tape across your device or you might be securing it with rubber bands or something like that, but you should be able to show the event leaders at check-in what it's going to look like while you're testing and they should be able to check that, all right? If there's some super elaborate design that I haven't thought of, which I know is what you guys are at home thinking about, and we have to check it while the water's in it, we can address that on an individual basis if we have to. But let's try and knock this part out at check-in. It doesn't say that you have to um, label your device. Please label your device, all right? Especially those of you with varsity and JV teams. Let's not get into a, um, a, an event and somehow mix up the devices, okay? So put some sort of label on it so we know it's yours. We're gonna have you put all this stuff at a station um, in the event. So we want these things to be taken care of. Event leaders, you have a lot of setup to do. So you've got to get through impound and then, um, and that happens at the, you know, either at the very beginning of the day or at the middle of the day, depending on the division. And then you have to immediately turn around and start running the event. So you have to do some prep work and thinking in advance. There's information that you've got to put on the board but you can't put this information on the board until after impound. So the students cannot know the temperature of the room, the water temperature, how much water you're using. None of that can be written on the board until after impound. Probably most important is that you get these beakers of water going early in the day. We set this one up. There's only 600 milliliters of water in there. It took almost an hour to get it to the temperature that we wanted to use for the day. So please think ahead, start these very early so that we don't have 60 degree or worse than that, like 50 degree water in the room when you're ready to start the event and now we're pushed back on a start time because you didn't heat up the water in advance. So that's really important. You also need to get an ice bath going. What I have told my coaches, right, North Carolina coaches, we're not putting ice in, and water in these beakers. We're putting water in the beakers, we're dumping ice and water in around it. This needs time to cool down. It is not stated in the rules, but for North Carolina, we'll put up this clarification, we're gonna tell you what the temperature of this water is because it can vary depending on how cold you made the ice bath, all right? Set these things up before you start impound and then they can be cooling and heating while you're checking students through, all right? So then, depending on whether you're running an even odd schedule or you're, everyone's coming in the room at the same time, you've impounded your device, you do not have to impound your notebook, you do have to turn in to the event leader your set of graphs. Remember, you're not gonna get those back at the test, so you should have a set of graphs to turn in to be graded, as well as a set of graphs in your notebook or in a binder um, to bring in to actually calibrate. Okay, so we've gone through impound, we've checked, this meets all the specs, if there's a question about whether there is fiberglass insulation, mineral wool, or asbestos buried somewhere beneath your duct tape and foil, all right, or um, 
layers of fabric, whatever it is you're using to make this device, we're gonna ask you to prove to us that that's not what's in there. So it may mean that you have to take part of your device apart. If some piece does not meet specs at impound, you have a chance to fix it um, before you start testing, but you will take a 30% deduction on um, the pieces of the test that involve this device, okay? So measure, measure, measure. Measure the size of your cube. Measure how that you have this 12 centimeters or less, all right? Um, measure your hole. If it's suspect, all right, they're gonna get in there with a pair of calipers if they have to and prove that um, what the size is. We'd rather be able to see all the way down through and know that you've got that opening. Okay, so now everyone has impounded. You've gotten through the first um, mad rush of the day and you're ready for the test. At this point, event leaders, you need to provide all of this information. For B division, cooling time is 30 minutes, but it still doesn't hurt to write it on the board. For C division, you've got, you've got a range of um, times that you can pick. Water amounts can vary by 25 milliliters um, increments in the regional, okay? And the room temperature, please, there'll be a thermometer in a, your event leader boxes if you're, um, that we're sending along to our staff that help with this, or you can use a digital thermometer. Don't just take what's on the wall, kind of walk and see what the room temperature is and write that up there. All right, now the really fun logistics part is how do we get this water into everyone's um, beakers in an equitable way? All right, students, you are allowed to bring your own thermometers, okay? So we're gonna tell you what the, the temperature of the water is, but that may vary slightly um, as we start pouring water down the lines. So event leaders, you really need to think about how many students are gonna be in your room doing this at the exact same time, and therefore how many beakers you need. One beaker like this is not gonna suffice for your tournament, okay? You're gonna need to have these set up down a line. I'm guessing that you're, you'll be in a chem lab, something like this. Um, my suggestion is no, that no more than four or five teams share a thing of water, because as you take this off, right? As you take this off and move down the line and start dumping water into devices, this is gonna to start to cool off so you, and you're not gonna make it around the room at the same temperature. All right, so students, you're going to have your sheet at your desk. You're gonna have your device. You're gonna have a notebook full of supply. And you may have some supplies, some tools, some calculators, all the things allowed by the rules at your station. Please think about this when you set this up. Number one, this water is going to be very near boiling. Think about that. Um, please take care. You've got to wear your chemical splash goggles while you're setting this up. Um, safety in those pieces. Okay, it's time for water. So here's what's going to happen. Students, remember how I told you you should bring three beakers? The third beaker you can use to get your water if you decide you want an ice bath. So right before the event leader comes and, and is ready to give you water, you need to go up to the ice bath. If you want water, pour the amount that you want and have it ready to go, okay? The event leader is going to come to you with some hot water and we're going to pour in to two beakers as much as we put on the board. Okay, if you are going to use ice water, now is when they verify how many milliliters you're going to put in. Dump it in your beaker. Put it in your device, secure it. At this point, if you wanna take your own temperature, go ahead. Um, if you don't, you're welcome to use the, the, the data that's provided by the event leader, okay? And then you're gonna to need to write your prediction on the paper. You're gonna write this in some obnoxious color, all right, that we're gonna provide pens for. So you're gonna to have to make one prediction and write it down. Event leader, you're gonna go ahead and move on to the next team pour in, uh, you have to record the time at each station that you're entering or that you're pouring the water in because then we come back exactly 30 minutes later to take that, um, that final reading. That's why staggering a couple of these over a few minutes is a good idea because otherwise you're not gonna be able to read these to, to, um, the temperatures off these devices quickly enough. So uh, regional directors, I can't stress enough that this is really an event that's gonna require um, a lot of bodies in the room to help manage. Four or five teams per person is probably all that you can manage. All right, so we've gotten the first team set up. The water's gone down. We've, we've done teams two and three. We come back to the beginning. 
we verify that they've gotten their prediction written down um, in my obnoxious color. We make sure that we verified it's ice water or not. We can put a line across that if there's no ice water. We hand out the test. While at that point, um, any, any thermometers and devices you know, need to be taken out. The students have at least 20 minutes to take the test. They really should have more than that. So students, you can work on this test up until the end of the timing period. That way everyone will have plenty of time. It should be probably more like 30, 35 minutes that you'll have to work on this test. Then event leaders, you need to keep an eye on the time. Volunteers, you're gonna come back to the beginning, get the thermometers, make sure when you turn them on that they are in Celsius, all right? Celsius, very important. It should be something in the 20s range, not something in the um, 70s range, most likely, all right? When you have it in your hand. And then you're gonna take both temperatures, okay? You wanna let it sit there for about 20, 25 seconds until it settles out. and you're gonna record that temperature in the same obnoxious colored pen um, on the score sheet or on the checklist. Then you're gonna take it out, the paper towel, your shirt, I don't care, it's water, it's up to you. Dry it off, put it inside the other device or put it in the device and measure the temperature and record that on the sheet as well. So everyone's device it's based on the internal temperature of their device versus the external temperature of the water in the same beaker on the counter. Okay, so remember that at the end of the day, even if the water, in, if the ratio, it's the ratio of how hot the water is in your beaker, inside versus outside, that matters. And that's what goes into the spreadsheet. You should definitely check out the spreadsheet that's on the National Science Olympiad page for this. You can play with it, put in some different scenarios and see what that's gonna do to your scores. Um, students, if you've got a thermometer that you've been working on, you should go ahead and bring that and use it if you want to so that you can predict it. Just remember, you can't leave it in for the whole, whole testing period and we're gonna use our own thermometers to come and test the device at the end. All right, so that's the logistics on this one. It's a little bit um, to wrap your head around and as long as we're all working on it together and thinking ahead on it, we should run smoothly for everyone. Good luck. So even if temperatures are a little off from each other as we pour the water in, it's this ratio that matters. So students, if you've got a thermometer that you've been using and you want to use for the